So we define a circle as the set of all points on a plane that are a fixed distance from a center. So this circle here is centered at 0, 0. And they are all at a um, unit, uh, four units from that center. So if I go to the right four units, I go to the up four units, I go to the left four units, I go down four units. Those are the easy points to see. Those obviously lie on the circle. But so do an infinite number of points that also lie on the edge of the circle. Because if I um, picked any point, I just picked this one in quadrant one, but I could likely pick it in any other quadrant. This is an xy value. And we would find that the distance from the center to that xy point is going to be at a length of four. And then we could easily find um, what that x value and that y value are. OK? <clears throat> But sometimes our, center, our circles are not centered on the origin. Sometimes they are centered somewhere else. So if we go away from the origin, I can still, that's OK, given any r, any radius, I can still go to the right. I can go up, down, I can go to the left, and an infinite number of points around that center point. So let's look at an example. Oh, actually, first let's look at the formula. <laughs> So there is a, um, an equation in standard form. We're going to talk about general form later in another video, but this is, general form, this is standard form. Um, in some of your books, I just want to see this, or you to see this, some um, people call this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And the center, in that case, they call h comma k. It's the same thing. I've seen, I've seen the formula written both ways. It really doesn't matter if you call it HK or AB. OK? So let's graph a few of these. So let's just start with the basics. How to plot a circle. <laughs> so if we have a point at our center at 3, negative 4, I'm going to go ahead and plot that point. Here's 3, negative 4. And I'm given that it has a radius of 2. So that means I'm going to go, the easiest way to graph it, because I'm not going to do all those diagonals. It's a little too hard to do manually. So I'm just going to go to the right two units, to the left two units, up two units, and down two units. Can you see that those are all at a distance of two? And I simply connect them all. So that is a circle centered at 3, negative 4 with a radius of 2. So that's if you're given this information you know, nice and neatly like this. But generally, you are going to be given information a little more like this, <laughs> where you have an equation, the formula that I, the form that I just gave you. So let's look at that for a second and compare this. So I have x minus 3 squared. And in my formula, I have x minus a squared. And then I have y plus 5. Hmm, that looks a little odd because I've got a plus sign. And then I've got y minus b squared. So um, the easiest way to do this is if you want to think of, this is a little trick, is to do opposite, opposite. So my center, what is the opposite of negative 3? Well, the opposite of negative 3 is going to be positive 3. And what's the opposite of, negative, of positive 5? That's going to be negative 5. So this circle is going to be centered at 3, negative 5. Because I really, in my formula, I want what appears after a negative sign. So this one was straightforward because I already had a negative sign, so I just took the positive 3. But this one had a positive sign, so this could be rewritten as y minus negative 5, right? I could put two negatives together there, and that's how I came up with the negative 5. But most students I know just remember opposite, opposite. So I just remember I'm going to take the opposite of that negative 3, get positive 3, opposite of positive 5, and get negative 5. So this circle is going to be centered at 3, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now for the radius. So in my formula, I have equals r squared. But I've got this number 25. So this is a really, really, I can't emphasize this enough, guys, good habit to get into. I know whatever number is on this side equals r squared. So r squared, set it equal, because a lot of mistakes are made right here. r squared actually equals 25. So if I take the square root, you can see that r equals 5. So my radius is only 5. So I'm going to go to the right 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 5, and to the left 5, and down 5. And I'm just going to connect them all.
and that's going to be my center. So be really careful. If you look at your formula again, I keep referring to this, get this formula memorized, um, what the number on the right side of the equation equals r squared. So whatever number you want to set that equal to r squared. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's do one that looks a little bit different but isn't much harder. So here's this one. Okay, so remember I told you to take the opposite opposite, so what am I going to take the opposite of for x? I don't see a number here. Well, you guys are smart enough to know. This really could be rewritten. I really don't want you to write it this way, but I just want you to see where it comes from. I could rewrite that as x plus 0 squared, correct? Because 0, you know, x plus 0 is just is still x. So my center, in this case, opposite of 0 is going to be 0, and opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. So my center is going to be at 0, 1. And remember, this is what I cautioned you about. r squared equals 5. So if r squared equals 5, well, I need to take the square root. So my r is going to be the square root of 5. Well, how do I go over the square root of 5? Well, you can use, that, use your calculator for that. You don't need to know this. And that's roughly 2.23. So if I go ahead and center my circle, 0, 1, then I can go in all four directions, 2.23. So just go two and a little bit more. One, two, and a little bit more. Back two and a little bit more. And down two and a little bit more. And there's going to be my circle. It doesn't need to be exact, guys. Don't, um, don't lose too much sleep over <laughs> graphing that. And last but not least, so now we know if we're given an equation, we know how to, if, if you're already given the equation, you know how to find the center, you know how to find the radius. You know how to plot, once you find those two pieces of information, you know how to plot the point. But what do we do if we're given just a picture? <laughs> well, we can find the center of this guy, right? The center is going to be about here. And my center is going to be, what is that? That is negative 5, 4. That's my center. And I can figure out that my radius is 3. I'm going over 3, back 3, up 3, down 3. You might want to check all four directions because sometimes you might, um, you know, people, this line's a little darker. They might assume that the center was there and then miscount. So I go in all four directions just to check. So my radius is 3. So let's go back to our formula. So x minus, we'll call it h in this case, h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So remember I told you to take the opposite opposite? Well, the same is going to hold true here. So I can do x, what's the opposite of negative 5? Well, isn't that going to be positive 5? So I'm going to have x plus 5 squared plus, and the opposite of um, positive 4 is going to be minus, so y minus 4 squared equals r squared. So my radius, I don't need to do anything with that, right? I already know what my r is, so I'm just going to square it. So that's going to equal 9. So make sure you can go back and forth. You know, either you're either given an equation, I'm sorry, not an equation, yeah, sorry, given an equation, and you can find the center and find the radius and graph it, but also be able to look at a picture, determine what the center and radius are, and then put it back into a formula.